This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time. Content presented in the following podcast is for information purposes only. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the host and guest and may not represent the views and opinions of the Whole Care Network. Always consult with your physician for any medical advice and always consult with your attorney for any legal advice. And thank you for listening to the Whole Care Network. my friend. This is the Time to Care the Caregivers podcast and I'm Isabel Malgarejo, your host. I've been a caregiver for almost 20 years. During this time, I've discovered a lot of things about caregiving that I want to share with you. So welcome to this podcast. Today, I want to talk about building support systems and how to include the right people in them. And probably This is something that you've been asking yourself about how to do it and how to start, how to start trusting your support system. So let's get started. When I was a teenager, I was a very rebellious teenager and probably I was not the most rebellious person in the world, but I was always defying the loss. And I remember one day, and it was not one day, it was many days in which I had this conversation with my mom and I had it over and over and over until I don't know if she lost trust in me or we just passed that era in our lives. (laughs) As you may know, teenagers, we're rebellious, we want to do whatever we want to do and we don't listen to our seniors (laughs) we don't listen to anybody and we just want to do whatever we want to do because we think we're always right (laughs) and I remember these conversations it was always about the time I would come back home I was always late I never got home on time and I think this really frustrated my mom and probably both my parents, but mostly my mom. She would tell me that I would lose her trust if I was not getting home on time. And then she would repeat this conversation about how how you build trust and eventually you completely lose trust on people. What she forgot to tell me is that you also build trust. You're not giving the keys to your home to all of your friends. You build trust, and then when you have enough trust in them, you may share your house keys with someone. But it's not like that happens on day one of your friendship, you know? And the same happens with all of our relationships. We build trust over time. And we can either keep building that trust or if someone screws up completely, then the trust is lost forever or certain trust is lost. So it kind of goes both ways. You you have to start building that relationship with everybody. And that includes your support system you need to start creating trust in your support system. I think this is something that most caregivers don't take time to do. They want to trust people completely on day one. When things don't happen the way they want things to happen, then they completely lose trust in their support systems. But... That's not how things work. We build trust over time. Because whatever we're asking people to do, that has to be built 
over time. So you have mentioned, well, I have mentioned about my trip and my disconnection for two weeks. During the last podcast, I talked about creating support systems that would provide the support that I needed during these two weeks that I took off. I'm going to talk about one specific case. We asked some friends to take care of our dog. My husband and and this couple, they have been friends for 10 years, probably more. But for more than 10 years, he has built a relationship with these people. When I met my husband and when I moved to Texas, we started building this relationship. My husband has 10 years of building this relationship, and I've been building this relationship for five years. They have come over to our home, we have been to their home, we have shared trips, we have shared lots of experiences, we have been to a lot of things together, and we built that relationship. And then we asked them if they could care for our dog for the time that we were going to be off. We asked them for this favor because we have built enough trust with them and that trust was not there for anybody else. These were the people that we trusted the most to be able to care for our dog. And this had nothing to do with money. It had everything to do with, I don't want to put my dog into boarding for more than two weeks. Who's the right person to do that job? And these people that we have been building relationship with for many, many years were the right choice for us. And we didn't put our dog just like, oh, you're just taking care of him for two weeks. We did a test for one night and we saw how things were going. So you kind of build that relationship with people. And so hap- and this happens with absolutely everything that you want to get support with. You start building trust and respect and relationships with people. You need to start testing with smaller challenges so you both kind of learn throughout the journey. So we just didn't leave Curio for two weeks. We did a test, like, how is this going to go? Their dog, our dog, they know each other, they play nice. Let's leave them together for one day, for a couple of days, and see how that goes. So you kind of build that trust, and then you go with bigger things. And so is with everything we do. We need to start creating these relationships and putting, I don't like to call them tests, but it is sort of making tests over time so we can see how things go. Because when we just jump and we want to trust 100% someone or a situation or whatever, most probably we're not going to have the results that we want. Most probably, things are going to go not the way that, they, that we want them to go. So it is important that we start testing little by little with the different people and building that trust over time. When you start building this trust, you then start creating these support systems that you need. You start asking for your support systems and making these support systems do little things and then you start asking them to do bigger things. Asking them to do little things is very important and I'm going to tell you why. First of all is building trust and another reason for why you want to start with the smaller tasks and responsibilities is because it is easier for people to do 
smaller tasks than bigger tasks. When you're trying to build a new habit, if you try to incorporate a new habit and changing all of your life, you are going to fail. But if you start making little changes, making them so small that you can manage them and it is so simple, it makes it easier doing bigger things because you started small. And I see this with a lot of my entrepreneur friends. They want to build a huge business overnight and that doesn't happen. You have to build them little by little. You have to build step by step. So it happens with everything we do in our lives. We have to build step by step. And these support systems, you can't build a huge support system overnight. You have to build it little by little, step by step, trusting and creating that relationship. So when you start giving other people the opportunity to prove themselves and trust themselves with little things, then you start building that trust. And you start building that relationship and you start knowing how they like working with you or how you work and collaborate together and how that support system supports each other. And for example, if that trust is not built upon the smaller steps, then you can either correct, you can either tweak things or you can start trusting somebody else. But everything starts with the tiny little things. And you need to start building those relationships over time. And a lot of this is just try and error. You will try some things with some people and see if that works out or not. And then you will try other things with other people. Not everybody is the right person for all of the tasks. Going back to the example of our dog, I talked about this with a very good friend of mine. And I was worried about leaving Hear you, our dog, for 17 days somewhere. I was worried about what was the right support system for him. She recommended someone. That someone never talked to me. And the reason why I think he never reached out to me was because that relationship that we built was not there with him, even though he was going to get paid. But that relationship that is built over time, over all of these years, that relationship didn't happen with this person. And she trusts this person to take care of her dog, but she has built this relationship. So again, you need to start building relationships based on time and based on smaller commitments that work for you. In your support system, you need to start creating that trust and you need to start connecting with a lot of people. You are not going to build a support system overnight. You need to start testing it. You need to start including more people. And most of the people think that with a couple of people in their support system, they're going to be okay. No, that's not how it works. You have to build and expand as much as you can. It's like a tree. If you want to grow bigger and bigger and bigger, you have to expand your roots as far as you can. Expanding those roots, that will allow you to have a great support system. You can see a a huge tree, a big tree with lots of foliage, beautiful. And you don't see underneath that there is a huge support system of roots going in all of directions and reaching out a lot of people. That is how it should be. Your roots should be far away and you need to keep expanding that support system and including and inviting new people to participate in your support system. And some of these people are going to be paid providers. You have doctors, you have nurses, you have service providers, you have all of these people that you're giving money to be part of that support system. And there's other people that are there and they're not paid. You have friends that you talk with, you have 
other friends that provide care. You have neighbors that probably have an eye on your loved one. But you have all the support system and all of these people that are paying attention and providing some sort of service and care for you and for your loved one. And it all starts with tiny actions and building that trust. In some cases, you have to trust faster, but you have to create that trust. You have to build that relationship over time. And the only way you can do that is by starting small. So if you want support in creating those systems, I'll be more than happy to help. And because I like starting small, I like starting connecting with people one-on-one. So I would like to get to know you on a personal level. Get a time slot with me. It's free. It's 30 minutes. And we can talk about your needs and how I can support you. Get a slot in my calendar and talk to you soon. This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time.